Hello and welcome. So as requested in a previous video, I'm going to show you all how to download Metasploitable 2. Um, for those who do not know, right, what is Metasploitable 2? It's actually a box that beginning pen testers or people just learning about cyber in general, uh, it's a box that they could download, put on their machine, and then just relentlessly attack, right? The whole purpose is it's almost like a punching bag for a boxer, right? Except we're computer nerds, right? We're not doing physical exercise, right? We're actually going to be attacking this box instead. Um, so the purpose of this video is going to be showing you how to download that on a Windows machine in VMware, right? Uh, now keep in mind, if you have a Mac machine, this video will not be for you, unfortunately. And if you have VirtualBox, this video will also not be for you. Um, if you want a video on using either Mac or VirtualBox or the combination of the two, I can absolutely do that, but I will do that as per request. Uh, I'm going to go right now with the most common distributions, that being Windows and VMware. Um, so let's get started. Step one, type in Metasploitable to VM in your area of choosing when it comes to Google, whether it's the URL bar or the search engine. Uh, I'm going to go to the Rapid7 one, right? So this box was actually developed by Rapid7, right? Therefore, if we click on it, it's going to bring us to the uh, sanctioned or approved methods of downloading, right? When it comes to security, we don't want to download files that we don't understand because they could be malware. Right? It's very common that hackers will try to lure us in. So I'm just going to click the top one here. I know it's from Rapid7, and they give me two options to download this. I'm going to download it from SourceForge. If you go for the first one here, the first option, it's going to require you to put information in. You know, I don't like talking about myself that much. So I'm just going to go with option number two. And the way it works, right, is when you hit download, it's going to give you a five second countdown and it's going to download it for you. So pretty straightforward, right? The key to this video is going to be once we have downloaded this, right, what do we do next? So I don't want to make you all wait two minutes for me. I already downloaded this before. This is the process though so far. Um, what we have to do next, right? is I'm now in my downloads folder. And a key step that a lot of people forget to do is you need to unzip the file, all right? So if you just try to upload it from the zip file, right, the zip folder right here, it's not going to work. So step one, and let me get rid of this other stuff here. Uh, let's get rid of that. So I just have one iteration. Well, can't get rid of that right now. That's totally fine. Um, but step one, and let me see if can I make this bigger. View, let's do large icons, right? So I have this zip folder that I've just downloaded. I'm going to right click it. I'm going to hit extract all, and I'll extract it right here. Um, I don't have enough disk space. Damn. Let me delete. All right, and welcome back. After a brief intermission of uh, deleting a ton of files that I have disk space, I'm going to show you once again how to do this. I'm going to delete that, and I'm going to right-click my zip file, hit Extract All, and hit Extract. Right, and now that I have space on my machine, this will now work. Um, another way to do this that a lot of people don't know, I'll show you in just a second, is just to drag the folder out. Right, so actually just to, you could open the zip folder and drag the unzip one out, which is pretty interesting. Right, so for example, I could also just do this to unzip it, right? You'll see it's doing the same thing. Uh, pretty cool. Don't need 7-zip or any of those other fancy tools. Just drag and drop. So next up is we now have this unzipped, right? We have this just ripped out of the zip file. Uh, what we need to do is we need to open up VMware, right? Um, as I've spoken about previously, VMware is basically like, think of it as a video game console. Right? It's a video game console. Metasploitable 2 is the disk we put in the console. Right? So VMware is what we're going to use to play the disk, right? but Metasploitable 2 is the actual disk itself. So what I need to do right, is I've opened this up. Unfortunately, I can't make the font any bigger on this, so I do, uh, I do apologize that it's maybe on the smaller side. Let me see if I can change display settings. Let's go to 200. Oh yeah, that looks pretty good. Right, let's open it. Great. So what I need to do now is I'm going to click open a virtual machine. I'm going to go to downloads, my unzip folder, right? Keep my unzip folder. That is key. I'm going to double click into it again, and there's going to be a VMX file. This is going to be a completely built virtual machine. And when I double click on it, it will throw it into my VMware, my hypervisor, right? 
it'll create this metasploitable 2 disk image, and all I have to do is double click to start it up. Now it's going to ask us a question did we move it or copied it? If we don't know the answer, I copied it. I don't know the answer. Um, never had any issues by hitting I copied it, so looks pretty good to me. And now we're going to have the box start up, right? which is pretty nice. So we'll just give it a minute here. I'll probably put in a quick little transition to make it so you don't have to wait. All right, welcome back. So um, we now have the box, right? It's up and running, it's operational, but I'm sure you all are concerned about like, well, how do I make sure it's on my network? Um, well, first and foremost, I'm gonna log in. And for those who do not see, the login is MSF admin, and so is the password. So I'm gonna type in MSF admin. I'm gonna put in the same password and I'm gonna hit enter. Now I am in the box. If I ls, I see it has some files on it. If I do ip space a, right, I can see the ip address. All right, so pretty cool. Let me see. If I can get out of this real quick. So we now have our box right here. Um, now what I need to do, right, and what you all may have experienced with doing before, uh, is you have to open up another box to connect, test their connectivity. So I'm going to go into the bottom left. I'm going to open up another VMware workstation player. So keep in mind, this is like having one computer open. I'm going to open up my Kali box as well. I'm going to hit enter. Oop. Hit enter a couple times. I'm going to wait for this to boot up. This box I'll make a little bit bigger. So this is my Kali machine. I'm going to sign in. And I'm going to show you all how to test connectivity between these two boxes. Close out all this. Close out that in the background. So basically, we have our two boxes here. I'm going to make my Kali one much, much bigger. Uh, Metasploitable, unfortunately, will stay super duper tiny. This box is non-cooperative when it comes to making it its font a little bit bigger. So what I'm going to do, right, to test the connectivity between these two boxes is I'm going to use the ping command. I'm going to type in ping, and then the IP address I see on the right here, which is 192.168.80.134. Hit the right arrow to autocomplete this. And if we get 64 bytes, we're good to go. These two boxes are connected. Uh, if I can ping it, I can attack it, right? So I could quickly nmap scan this, right? I see all the ports open. I could browse to it. This Metasploitable box actually has a web server portion. So I could browse to this box on the web. Right, I'm going to go 192.168.134, hit enter, right? And I can view Metasploitable 2 here. Um, now, if your machines are not able to connect to each other, you're not able to ping, you're not able to go to the website like I just did. The reason for that is because if you go to player, file, or excuse me, manage, virtual machine settings, you may notice that your network adapters on different settings, right? Um, for the sakes of the video and right for the, the purposes of my usage, I keep both of them on my NAT. As long as the, the virtual machine network adapter that your Metasploitable 2 box is on is the same as your Kali, then you should be good to go. Right, I have them both on that. Right, so that's one quick tip in terms of troubleshooting. Now the process, if you were doing this all on VirtualBox, is much different. Right, and by much different, I mean the process of connecting the two tends to be pretty different. Um, so luckily, I have a video on how to connect two VMs in VirtualBox specifically. Um, but if you all want to see how to download Metasploitable 2 in you know a Mac environment and uh, and or VirtualBox, right, feel free to throw it in the comments. I am not opposed to showing that as well. Um, but this is really all you need to know for Windows, right? So step one is download. Step two is unzip. Step three, import into the uh, your hypervisor, which in this case is VMware. And then step four, right, the final step is going to be pinging, making sure you're connected. So thank you for joining the video, right? If you have any issues, the key there is going to be the network cards. I guarantee if your two boxes are open but not able to talk, more likely than not, it's the network cards. The only other thing it could possibly be not the only other thing, but the, the main other thing that I see a lot of students make mistakes on is they may have a firewall rule that is up. So you might want to do sudo ufw disable 
keep in mind this command is not installed by default. You'll have to do sudo apt install ufw. All right. So this is going to install my firewall command. And then I'm going to do sudo ufw disable to kill my firewall, right? So that's the only other thing I could think is being a common issue for a lot of people when it comes to the connectivity. Uh, but I guarantee you for the majority of you all, it's going to be the network interfaces. Uh, but just to show the two commands again, right? This is to, this right here is to install a firewall tool. And then the command below it, uh, where is it? This is to disable the firewall using that newly installed command. So thank you for joining me. Um, this was a relatively quickish video. You know, I like to drone on a lot. Um, so stay tuned for the next one. It's going to be a little bit more hacking focused instead of, you know, the setup networking focused video. But um, I appreciate you all tuning in and I will see you in the next video.